Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to go over how to calculate the relative strength index or RSI value in Excel. So RSI is a momentum indicator that you might use when buying or selling stocks and I'll just go over briefly how it works. So here I've got Amazon's um, stock price history and I've got an area for RSI. So how RSI works is it looks at the past 14 trading days it was typically the case you can change it but normally 14 days and it looks at a stock's gains and losses over that time so if the stock price went up a certain day then that's a gain if by the end of the day it was lower than the previous day then that was a loss and so it's basically looking at the relation of how how big the gains were in relation to to the losses if the gains were a whole lot bigger during that stretch compared to losses then the rsi value is going to be higher and closer to you know maybe over 60 over 70 the the scale goes from zero to 100 and so it really extreme values of 90 and 100 are, are pretty rare but anything over 70 as is in the case here is is considered to be overbought so there's been a whole lot more buying a whole lot more gains than there have been losses during the past 14 trading days on the flip side if the rsi value falls to below 30 the stock is considered to be oversold so there's been a lot of selling pressure so you know there might be a uh, potential for the stock to to rebound to maybe it's overdue for a rally right so it could be the stock uh, the company released some bad news and then there's been a whole lot of selling pressure after. So if, if it's over oversold, perhaps it's an overreaction to that, right? So that's how you may interpret that. And so this year with, with, with the bear market, you know, a lot of stocks have been uh, doing badly. And so Amazon's been oversold multiple times, whereas overbought only happened once, briefly, right? So that, that's what RSI tells you. It basically looks at when there's been a whole lot of selling or a whole lot of buying and helps you flag those instances. Generally, you're not quite as interested if the RSI value is anywhere in between because that just means it's sort of fluctuating normally. But it, it's, it's useful at, as a momentum indicator to tell you when it's gotten to these extreme lows or these extreme highs. Like I said, get, getting to a really high value of 90 or, or even 80 is rare just like getting to an rsi of 20 or lower is rare you know even in the bear market you know it's getting getting down to those levels is is really rare so for the most part it's going to fluctuate between 20 and, and 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 80 even though the scale goes from zero to 100. so now i'm going to show you how we can calculate this in excel so i'm going to start by just entering in a place for the ticker so am zn and if you've got Office 365, you should have the stock history function. If not, you may just need to copy the historical um, closing prices into here. And so what I'm going to do is reference the stock, AMZN. For the start date, I'm going to use the start of 2021. So January 1, 2021. And then for the end date, let's do Christmas of 2022. 12, 25, 2022. And you can use the today function if you want it to come up until today. So hit enter. And now it populates those fields. So I've got my date, my closing value, all the way to December 23rd, which was the last trading day before, before Christmas in, in 2022. Next up, what I'm going to do is create categories for the gain or the loss. And so the, the first training day, obviously, I don't have anything uh, prior to compare against. So I'm going to start with the next one. And just to use a simple if function, say, okay, if this value is greater than the previous day's value, then obviously that's a gain. And in which case, I'm going to take that difference. So 160 minus the 159. Otherwise, it's a value of zero. So that was a positive gain. Went up $1.59. And I'm going to do the same thing for a loss. And say, okay, if this was less than this value, whoops, less than the previous day value, then I'm going to take this value, or actually the, the previous day's value, and subtract this one, just so, just so this is always positive. It saves me um, having to convert this into positive values later on to do, to do calculations. 
So I can copy these formulas all the way down. And I'm just going to adjust the formatting. There we go. So now we can see on this day, you know, the stock dropped by four, $4. Right? So that's that $4 loss. When it gained, it shows up in this column. When it had a loss, it goes into this one. So easy enough, making sure it goes all the way to the bottom so everything looks looks fine there. So that's step one. Next, what I'm going to do is calculate the average gain and the average loss. Okay. So I'm going to start with the average gain. And because we're looking at the first 14 trading days, basically I want to start once I, got, once I get to the 14th day here. And in this case, what I'm going to start with is just a simple average. An average of the the past 14 actually gains, not, not the stock price. So the average gains over the past 14, 14 trading days. And actually I should adjust this down because technically that first day we didn't have a section for, for the gain. So that's what it should look like. So 1.19 is the average for the first, for the initial 14 trading days. Now, because the, the RSI is always is always moving, it's it's always changing. Um, it's it 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 has an exponential component to this, where we're effectively always going to be updating for the most recent price. We're not just going to take a simple fourteen day average here. What we're going to do is, uh, in later in later periods, what we're going to do is we're going to take that previous day's value which in this case is going to be the 14-day the average, multiply that by a factor of 13, and then we're going to add the current day's gain, just so that way we give more weighting to the, the current value, and then divide that by a factor of 14. So that's, that's the part where it's always going to be, be skewing more towards the, the more recent values just to give that a bit more weighting than the previous 13 days. So it's always going to be carrying a little bit of history. And so it's only that first entry that's going to be just a simple average. After that, it's going to have that exponential uh, effect here. And now I can copy this down. And that is working properly. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the losses. So again, average losses. And then if you hit control R, you can copy the formula over just to make it simple. So again, we're taking the this this previous loss, this previous average loss, multiplying it by 13, adding the current loss and dividing it by 14. And so copy this down, and I'm gonna call this the average loss. Let's just double check, make sure it goes all the way to the bottom. So good, so that's step two. Next, what I'm going to do is calculate the average gain divided by the average loss. This is the RS value. So average gain divided by the average loss. So it's just a simple division here. And I'm just going to trim this down just to make it a bit easier. And then for the actual RSI calculation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually enter the formula in here. So what it looks like, it's on a scale of 100. So takes 100 minus 100 divided by 1 plus the RS figure. So that's the RSI value. So I'm going to put that formula up top just so it's easier to, to remember what that is. So, so square this. There we go. So, so now to enter in this form, I'm going to enter just how, how I've shown. So we're going to start with 100 minus 100 divided by 1 plus this RS value. Okay. And the purpose of this is, you know, it's going to convert this into a, a scale of, a, of 100, right? So in this instance, it gives us a value of 59.63. So that tells us there's been more gains than there have been losses over the past 14 days. And so it's not quite into overbought territory, but if we look at this in the past 14 days, you know, we've had gains totaling 16.6 .6 versus losses of 11.25. So there have been more days where there have been gains and the gains have been significant. This one day in particular, 
particular stands out as being a, a pretty strong day where the stock went up by by seven dollars all right so that's a a pretty strong uh, a bullish day that helped move that rsi figure up so i'm going to copy this all the way down and follow the same sort of logic and now as i get to the bottom as of december 23rd the rsi value is showing at 38.03 so that's fairly close to oversold but not quite so i'm going to pull up my uh my site from from bar chart here and so if you look at december 23rd you know we've got an rsi value of 38.03 you can see the table in the top left here showing that as of the 23rd it was 38.03 so that matches up with the data we're getting from from bar chart so the beauty of setting this up in, in excel is obviously you can extend this down as you plot more more data points into your spreadsheet you can expand this out for um, different tickers you could just change the the ticker here if you wanted to so for instance instead of Amazon type in Apple it's just gonna take a little bit of time to update but once we go down here you know Apple's at about 35.68 so generally tech stocks have been struggling um, toward the latter part of the year and so that's not really all that surprising but as you see this is this may be a bit easier than going through a website and looking up these values in excel you can use the stock history function to put in that data calculate the gains and losses get the average gains the average losses the rsi figure is pretty straightforward and then just putting into the rsi formula the one tricky part is just remembering the, this this formula for average gains and losses because like i said initially you're just taking the straight 14 day average but because you want to have uh it weighed more towards the more recent gains or losses you want to remember that you know you're you have to factor in the previous day's average gain and only weighting that by a factor of 13 for the 13 previous days and adding the entire amount for the current day just to give it a bit more weighting to the more recent values but that's how you can calculate rsi in Excel in a similar way you could work in Google Sheets as well. So hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.